Hey, you guys, hope you're having a great weekend. So this afternoon, I'm just taking a few minutes and uh, doing the last few edits for the next video. This is continuing with the Milton House job. This is number five in the series. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna be going through, making sure all my boxes are correct and laying out all of the face frame material. This is for the kitchen and the master bath at the Milton House. And uh, kind of reviewing how I do the face frames, why I have, uh, have and use different sizes of face frame material. Then I'm gonna be getting on the table saw, cutting a bunch of material for the face frames, and then planing it down, getting it ready to, to start cutting and, and actually building the face frame. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you do, please hit the like button. Please feel free to drop me a comment and please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification so you, that you know when the next video comes out. I'm trying to get it every week. Um, it's usually week, week and a half before the next one comes out. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this one and we will we'll talk soon. Well, I spent the last hour or so this morning going around buttoning up all my boxes, putting the last couple pieces of the quarter inch backs on. And uh, so all the boxes are built for the kitchen for the and for the master bathroom. So let me take you around, show you what I've got. So starting here, this is the master bathroom vanity, 10 foot six long at the countertop, uh, two twin vanities. And this is that center section that bumps out two inches and it's also uh, six inches taller. Um, you notice the bun feet. You're going to be able to see the front two on each vanity. Now this is a wall over here. This is a corner. So you won't see the back leg. See the front two, the front two. The entrance to the to the bathroom is over here so you will see that back leg. That's why I put one on the back there. Um, so let's see, a couple things you're going to notice probably is that I don't have a face frame piece or I don't have any support across here yet. I'm going to let the face frame be that support. I try not to give my, I try to give as much room as possible in my sink cavity because it's an undermount sink and the guys need to be able to get in there and work. Plus I don't want to get in the way of the, any faucets. I don't want to have any issues where we have to cut cut wood out after the fact. Now the only thing I haven't built is the tower that sits on this. The only reason I haven't built that yet is because I don't know how tall it's going to be. Um, it, the height of the crown on my tower is going to match the height of the door, the door casing, and I just don't have that measurement yet. So moving on to the kitchen, you'll see the, uh, this is the refrigerator box. That box there, goes up there. Uh, these are the two cabinets that flank the 48 inch gas range. That's the other box that sits up on top of the pantry. Now you'll notice the center section of the pantry doesn't have a back in it. That's because that entire section is going to be, I've got to do a built-in in there and it's out of white oak. And it's going to match the uh, the units at the fireplace on the other side of the room. So that I'm going to build separately. I'm going to build it to the opening, and then I'll just slide it in from behind, and I'll, I'll butt it right into my face frames after they're in. So that's why there's no back on that section. Now these two are the uppers for uh, next to the vent hood. These bottoms are going to get an integrated LED strip light and an integrated uh, power strip that's gonna run you know, the full length under here. So what I'll do, I'm gonna, put a, I'm gonna put a one inch finished piece here, then you'll have the three quarter strip light, then a solid piece here. You're gonna have your power strip here flush mount and then I'll do a three-quarter inch piece finished on the back 
That way all these pocket holes get covered up after I attach my face frames, of course. And uh, you won't see any of that. Back here, we've got the island. Of course, it's all, it's all taken apart. So the temporary braces for the dishwasher. Uh, you got the sink cavity there for the apron sink, the farm sink on down there. And then these, you know, this is all built in one, two, three. It's good. It's five different sections, but on site, I'll be able to put it all together. And of course it'll look like one piece. So that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to start ripping down the face frame material and, uh, Moving on to that step. So good morning, everyone. So today we're gonna to be starting on installing, cutting and installing all of the face frames. So that's kind of a fun, fun part of the project because it means that all the casework is done, moving on to the next big phase of building the cabinets. So you'll notice, you'll notice behind me, I got cabinets just kind of moved everywhere randomly because what I do, I, I check all my boxes after they're built, and then I lay out the face frames real quick on the box. It only takes a few minutes, uh, and that's mainly because I'm, you know, I'm familiar with every single piece. Uh, and then I also have everything written down on, the, on my plans, on my drawings. So I know, I know basically where everything should be, the sizes, how the face frames are going to lay out, the overhangs, different things. Uh, but again, I measure twice, cut once. I go through and I check everything again just to make sure. And uh, some of the pieces are a little more complicated, like this island that I'm doing, because it's got, it's 12 foot long, so that's a big island. It's got the sink dead center that will line up with the range behind it. Uh, but then I've got some appliances in it. I got an ice maker, I got a warming drawer, got a uh, microwave drawer dishwasher so there's a lot going on in it it's also beaded inset face frames all the appliances will have fronts on them so there's a lot to a lot to take into consideration on face frames especially if it's an inset if it's an, an overlay with you know quarter inch gaps everywhere it's not as important but on this one it's a little bit more critical so let me show you what I've what I was doing yesterday so yesterday, what I did, again, like I said, I checked all the boxes, just laid them out real quick, went through, made sure all my face frames, the, the boxes were the correct size, allowing for the face frames. But then I went through back on my blueprints and I checked everything. Now I don't, a lot of guys will just cut, you know, one and a quarter inch or one and a half inch face frames for everything. I don't do that. This is a, Every job is custom. There's different overlays. There's different things you have to take into consideration that will sometimes change the size of your face frames. So what I do, I go through again, check all my dimensions, note every single face frame size. Like you'll notice, my typical size is one and a quarter inch. So most of this is one and a quarter inch. But on certain occasions, I need a two inch. For instance, here, this bottom face frame here will be a two inch on both sides because I need it to be deeper because I've got uh, a light strip and a power strip that's going underneath. So I need that to be deeper. Um, you'll notice here on my uppers, the uh, this piece here, I've got two inches behind the crown molding and then one and a quarter face frame exposed. So that piece of face frame across all the tops has to be three and a quarter. So that's another size. On the back of the island, you'll see here, this represents the back of the island. All of these are one and five eighths. Same with these two. These two, that's one and five eighths. Uh, the back or the end panels are the, of the island. This is not a clear representation. Uh, it was that was just the original drawing, but I'll have an inch and a quarter here. The bottom face frame that's going to wrap and create the base that's four and three eighths. So I'll have four and three eighths there, and then that inch and five eighths again will repeat 
there. That way it's, it's fluid all the way around. You can kind of get an idea here. Inch and five eighths, inch and five eighths. That'll turn the corner. Inch and five eighths there. But then at the ice maker, it's turning out to be three and, it's actually three and a quarter. Three and a quarter on the ice maker and all the way at the other end of the island three and a quarter here now the reason that's three and a quarter on each end is because like i said i have a 12 foot long island sink is dead center so i work out from there dishwasher warming drawer ice maker uh microwave drawer so everything everything is based from center so I've got an inch and a quarter face frame there, inch and a quarter face frame there, a bead on the opening. And then this area is plus or minus. So I keep my inch and a quarter here. And then that gives me a wider leg there, which is matched down here. Now I, did, I kept the inch and a quarter here, the inch and a quarter there, 15 inch opening for the ice maker. Again, there's a bead on that face frame both sides that left over again that three and a quarter inch so it works out symmetrically but again that's just a different another part of the face frame a different size so what i do is take a scrap piece of wood and i write down every face frame size and how many linear feet I i'm going to need so you'll see on this island again because it was pretty complicated with all these all these openings and everything is again beaded inset even the face of my microwave drawer will be flush mount. It'll be beaded inset. So I didn't want my microwave drawer to be, to be sticking out three quarters of an inch. It's gonna be flush mounted. So I had to do the math. I had to make sure down to the 16th of an inch that everything worked. So you can see I got the inch and a quarter, got the 5 16 bead. Then I needed 23 and 7 eighths for the actual size of the uh, microwave. Of course, you need some clearance. So instead of 23 and 7 eighths, I've got 24 and a quarter. So you can see I did some math here. That's the face frame, 5 16 bead, 3 and a quarter. So I made sure it worked out everywhere. And again, I did that from the center of the sink right here, wrote my, my actual sink will come to here. That's a little gap for, you know, movement plus or minus, then the inch and a quarter face frame again from here to flush on the dishwasher, 5 16 bead on both sides. So that works out well. Again, that inch and a quarter face frame is repeated on the other side of the sink from here back. Then I've got my opening for the warming drawer will be actually be centered between there and here, inch and a quarter face frame, 5 16 bead, 15 inch opening, 5 16 bead, three and a quarter face frame. So everything, so I know for a fact, everything works out. There is nothing worse than getting to a job site and they put in the appliances and something doesn't fit and having to do a, a repair in the field Man, that'll just ruin your day. Plus, uh, the homeowners are always standing there or the contractor that you're working for, they're always standing there and, and you, it just creates doubt in their mind. You just kind of uh, makes you look like you don't really know what you're doing. And that is the last thing you want when you're trying to get repeat customers.
zero waste. 